right, all right. We're back. We are. Oh, you're here too. Yes, yes, I am. And you're a real person. Yes. Well, for all you know, I could be a figment <laughs> of your imagination. <laughs> don't be. Don't talk crazy. So, well, what are we playing today? I thought we could play this really cool werewolf board game today. Okay. This one. Right. Isn't this a licensed game? Though? Yeah, it's a Power Wolf game. Power Wolf, like the metal band? Yeah! Like, then you know it's definitely good, right? But it's just gonna be like a pasted on theme and a terrible game. Well, let's find out. I guess. I'm playing board games with my friends! Cheers. So, tell me, dear friend, who would win a fight between a vampire and a werewolf? You know, a more interesting question is, who would win between a strigoi and a power wolf? That is a very good question. Which just happens to be answered in today's game. Dun dun dun. <laughs> <laughs> so, hello everyone and welcome back to the show. We're doing another episode of Shekka Kapow Halloween. When this is a board game episode, so this is our third board game this October. And uh, I'm once more joined by uh, none other than Jan. A.K.A. Obi Juan, A.K.A. Master of Disaster, <laughs> Senor Juan. Yes. That's so enough. yes, well, yeah. that, that says all it needs yeah, to say. It really does. <laughs> Even a bit more. Even a bit more. Yeah. <laughs> so tell our audience, Jan, uh, a little bit about this game. Yes. So today's game is Armata Strigoi by uh, Marco Valtriani and Paolo uh, Valerga. Wait, Marco? And Paolo. <laughs> Valtriani and Valerga. Uh, and Valerga. Yeah, 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 of course. Of course. Um, and the thing that's worth noting is that it's actually published by Pegasus Spieler, which is a really big company. Uh, they've published some pretty big titles like yeah. Azul and Captain Sonar. And, yeah. There were lots of popular... Yeah games on that list yeah they're a really big publisher yeah yeah mm. it is uh, a cooperative board game mm -hmm. two to five players and it plays in about an hour hour and a half mm -hmm. um and it is a licensed game a licensed game yes um uh, official power wolf game <laughs> yes uh the heavy metal band power wolf if you're not familiar um Good but thing to mention. A good thing to mention. <laughs> but this is also a proper game. Uh, it's not just someone who slapped Power Wolf onto a board game box and hoped it would sell copies. Mm. Someone actually took the time, Marco and Paolo, uh, to yeah. make a real game. And that is the most impressive yeah. thing about this. Because I was expecting this to be bad. I was expecting it to be like very simple and not good at all. We've played... Two very good board games this month. Yes. Masters of the Night and The Hunger. Yeah. You can watch those reviews if you haven't seen them already on the channel. You should. They're really good. Very good. Yeah. Very good games. Yes. And, and videos. videos. Yes. But um, this was for me like, I was thinking we'll, we'll save this for last just to have something silly and probably not very good. But it was uh, way better than I expected. Yes. Me too. And yeah, so we are playing, uh, in this game, we are actually playing not just any, like, werewolf or... We're playing as power wolves. And yeah. that means we're actually playing as the band members of the band Power Wolf. Yeah. And in this setting, <laughs> they are also werewolves. Yes. That is just so cool. It is really <laughs> cool. And to top it off, you're not just werewolves. You're fighting vampires 
and you've killed all the vampires and now you're assaulting the <clears throat> last stronghold of the vampires in the old world and you have to defeat them before yeah. they manage to run away. And you fight in their castle. The, yeah. the game board is like the top floor of this castle where you're like facing the these vampire lords. Yeah, coming up the stairs. Mm -hmm. It's really cool. Yeah, so um, the setting is just awesome. Yeah. I, I, I love the theme and everything straight away. So it was so cool. It was. Um, but we're kind of almost getting ahead of ourselves with that. But let's, since we're on the topic, why don't we just go into, um, I mean, the illustrations. Illustrations. Yeah. And illustrations are by, you can try to pronounce it if you want. <laughs> uh, Sofia Dankova, perhaps? Maybe. Uh, probably. probably. It, but, yeah. Good enough. Uh, the illustrations are great. Mm. Absolutely fantastic. And there are so many unique illustrations as well. You have some of the cards, like the, you know, this is like a kind of a card game in some ways as well. Or you have your miniatures and everything, but you have cards. Every character, they have their deck. And you have some of the same cards, but for every character, the illustrations are different. So yeah. everything is unique and yeah, top-notch illustrations. Yeah, a lot of effort has gone into it. Mm. So visually, very cool. Yeah. And on top of that, when you when you put together the board, uh, there's these cardboard tiles that you lay out, and then some of them are these platforms mm. that are raised a little bit. That uh, added a little more to the whole thing. Yeah. It? And the characters are, of course, uh, miniatures, mm. which it, it looks really good. Very good. And... Yeah, I like that the vampire lords are are moving on these elevated platforms and yes. like teleporting yeah. here and there. Um, so visuals are awesome. Um, yeah, two to five players takes around an hour and a half to play, and everything is very smooth. Yeah, um, there are certain things about the rules that are probably sort of easier the second time you play it mm. um, not that the rules are very complex but you have these sort of achievements yeah uh, that that you sort of unlock kind of kind of there are these cards that you can get into your deck that gives you uh, more to do uh, but you'll only get them under certain conditions so such but as, they will uh, be met some, yeah some at way. some point at, at some, some point. point it's going to be you know, taking out one vampire or, or getting taken out by a mm. vampire or taking damage from a vampire or, or uh, accidentally being responsible for <laughs> killing your uh, teammate. Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> so this is, uh, would you say, what is is it a deck builder? What is this? <laughs> well, it's sort of it's card driven. Yeah, uh, and it's kind of deck builder, but not in the sense that a game like Thunderstone or Dominion no. is a deck builder where you keep buying or adding cards mm. to your deck because you kind of do keep adding cards to your deck and you have to manage that. Yeah. But um, I, I'd say it's card driven, but it's kind of hard to describe it as a deck builder. You can't builder. say it's a deck builder. You use those cards for fighting mechanics and uh, for, you, you use the cards to do whatever you want your character to do. So yeah. that is... It's a bit different than a regular deck yeah. builder. Yeah, and it's more about managing the cards you have and things. Because we, we went through our hand maybe once throughout the yeah. entire game. I, I, never, is, I never did. Yeah, which is very unique mm. for a deck builder. Because yeah. normally you'd go through your hand several times. Um, I kept getting new cards yeah. in hand all the time. So I was yeah. like using a card, getting a new one. Yeah, mm. which means that the sort of the hand management aspect is different from yeah. a... Uh, can you say traditional deck builder? Is mm. that, is that a term we yeah, can I mean, use? it's a card management yeah. style yeah. fighting game. <laughs> yeah. I haven't played anything doing that. No, it's it felt it felt unique. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, as we mentioned, it's co-op. What did you think of the co-op style and the mechanics and uh, all that? How well, yeah. So I liked it, mm. but there is this rule that you're not allowed to to plan things at the beginning of your turn mm. so at the beginning of the turn each player plays a card and you play it in secret and then mm. you reveal it at the same time and that determines the order in which you move uh, and it determines the movement of the vampires around the board and that's kind of probably why you like that rule is there so that 
we cannot manipulate how the vampires attack us. Yes. Yeah. All the cards, they also have a letter, uh, which is the direction the vampires will move yeah. after your turn. So I can't base, like, we can't talk about tactics until we've both played cards. And then you, it's more unpredictable how things will go. Yes. And that was really cool. Yeah. I like that mechanic. Yeah. Um. But after you put down the cards, we can discuss yeah. things. We discuss and talk and you try to plan as well yeah. as you can. That wasn't <laughs> easy in this game. No. Because <laughs> uh, <laughs> when the vamp- when you're hunting the vampires and the va- vampires keep moving, then it can be really hard to catch up to them sometimes. I imagine the more you play it, the easier it is to have a tactic around how to avoid getting hit and how to kind of counter their movements. Yeah. Because um, you can also change around the direction of the platforms. Yeah. And then you it'll alter how the uh, vampires can move. Or, um, so you can use that to your advantage, but we never kind of managed to utilize that. <laughs> no. Uh, it has to be said, we only played it once. These are the ones we got to try twice. Yeah. So for first try, uh, I mean, you, you will definitely mess up some things with any yeah. game. Like we did. Mm-hmm. We got messed up too. Yeah, we (laughs) lost. We We Uh, killed off one vampire. Yeah, we killed off one vampire and then the other one immediately killed us. (laughs) Smack! (laughs) Yes, right in the kisser. Mm. It was uh, brutal. But it was fun. It was very cool. Uh, I look forward to play this again. Yeah, me too. Me too. And on on that, do you feel it has a lot of replayability? I'd say so. Uh, It's hard to sort of say after the first mm. uh, game but uh, you can set up the board in different ways mm. uh, and the way or the paths you can move around the board will be different and with the different uh, player count the game yeah, might different play different characters differently. different characters uh, with slightly different decks yeah although I did feel like a lot of the um, uh, a lot of the difference between the character was sort of uh, built throughout the game with what cards yeah. you sort of got throughout the game more than your, more than your actual starting hand. Because in Masters of the Night, your abilities can sort of define your play style. But I feel like in this one, you can sort of. Uh, I, I didn't feel like the unique character no. or unique character cards really affected the game that much, as much as the no. cards you get. Yeah, because you get weapons, you get new like cards that you can use. To do stuff yeah. and that are some of them are more powerful than your starting hand. Oh yeah, um, so it's all about that again, card management. But um, and also the cards, the weapons you get, they have all of them had two like uh, abilities. One that where you can where you just put the card down and use it, and it's, it goes into your discard pile. But they also had like one special ability yeah. kind of thing where you destroy that card. Yeah, you just break it over someone's head. Yes, and then it's <laughs> a very powerful yeah. uh, ability. There was one card that only had that one time uh, yeah. use. Yeah, Sanctified and Dynamite. <laughs> yeah, so that's also very cool because all <laughs> these, all the cards, all the abilities, everything is like the title of Power Wolf songs and yeah. yes. stuff like that. <laughs> So if you're a Power Wolf fan, you should definitely check this out. Yes, because it is an actually good game. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Now, that being said, we haven't tried it four or five players, but um, how do you feel after this game with just as a two-player game? What did you think? I liked it as a two-player game. How would I you compare it, it between the other two games we've played on the two-player Thing. Yeah, see, that's very difficult because uh, if I was going to have to pick one out of these three games, uh, it probably wouldn't be this one. Mm. Yeah, are we where we rating these uh, games and comparing them, and where we give this a rating, or is there anything else you want to? Well, I think talk about. I think we might be ready for a yeah. die roll. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So, what are you thinking? Uh, you can start. Okay. Um, so we gave both of these strong fours, and I'm out of six, four out of six, not out of ten. Yeah, (laughs) so I'm tempted to give this a four as well, just because I 
don't feel like it deserves a three. No. I feel like it should be somewhere above average. Mm. That's that's what I'm thinking. Out of all these three, uh, I would rate it the lowest. Mm. Uh, simply because these two games are really good. Yeah. Um, it's a Richard Garfield game that also... That's true. And we did actually rate Masters of the Night above mm -hmm. the Richard Garfield game. Absolutely. Yeah. Which was to both our surprise. Yes. <laughs> um, I, yeah. So we, you would probably rank it one, two, and three then. Um, All of them being Yeah, one, four. two, three. Yeah. yeah. Yes. I agree. Um, four. Not as a strong four as this one. So if it was a 10 system, I would probably be like seven, six, five. Mm. Maybe. Yeah, maybe. And or, or maybe even uh, eight, seven, six. Something like that. Uh, yeah, yeah, I'm not sure. Uh, I would have to try this a couple more times. Yeah, that's true. That's true. But I had a lot of fun playing this game and I, w I look forward to try this again. So I had more fun with this, I think than The Hunger, but The Hunger, I would say, is a better game. So uh, this was a more fun game, but that was a better game for me personally. It's a really cool game. It's a really cool game. It feels very thematic. Absolutely. Yeah. We don't have enough things, movies or games, with, where you have werewolves and vampires. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Mm -hmm. We need more werewolves and vampires in our lives. Absolutely. Everyone does. Yeah, I think that sums it up. Yeah, I think so. All right. So thanks, guys, for stopping by. And I guess this is like... I guess this is goodbye. This is goodbye. This will be the last board game review. Until next time. Yeah, until the next one. Or, or until we do another yeah. one. Yeah. So stay tuned. Yeah. Take care. See you next time. Have a spooky and uh, scary Halloween. Yeah. Well, thanks for coming over, man. Yeah, it was it was a, great, a lot of fun. I told you, like werewolves kick ass. Werewolves kick ass. Power wolves really kick ass. Totally, dude. Oh, man. Although we didn't get our asses kicked. Get those damn vampires next time. Yeah, we will. Because we will be playing this again. Definitely. Hey, guys! Oh. I'm sorry I'm late. I was walking myself, and then I fell asleep under a tree. Are we still playing that werewolf versus vampire board game? Well, we just did. We just finished. We're just packing up now. Yeah, man. I tried to wake you up, but there was no hope. You were deep asleep, Lobo. What? Oh, uh, really? I was so looking forward to kill some vampires, man, and play some board games with you guys. Sorry. Oh, <sighs> well, I'm sure we'll be playing something again in the future. Yeah, I have a feeling this is not the last time we're going to be playing board games. Huh, okay. Well, I guess I'll go and uh, find my own uh, vampire on Werewolf Fun Time. See you guys later. I'm Lobo the Hobo. I sleep in the woods and kill vampires. <laughs>